Hi and welcome to Techable. In this episode, we're going to look at USB-C charging options with laptops. We're going to look at the kind of power adapters you can use. We're also going to look at the kind of battery banks you can use and what kind of speeds they can charge your laptop at. All the power adapters and USB-C batteries are different. So we have some mixed results so bear with us and we're going to show you exactly what we found. We're going to look at the types of battery banks you can use to power your laptops and also the types of charges that open up when you have USB-C charging enabled on your laptop. We've got a MacBook Pro and we've also got a HP Spectre X360 and we're going to give these a try, we're going to plug it in and we're going to see what kind of power draw they get from different types of batteries and different types of adapters. We're going to test these with some USB A type power banks, which are your standard power banks. And we're also going to test these with USB type C enabled power banks. And we're also going to test these with the, the lower capacity ones, which are just your USB type A. And we'll see if we can get these to work. We're also going to use a USB type C power meter so we can look at the watts that's going in to the laptops and we're also going to test out some USB type C chargers and we're also going to test out some standard high power output USB type A. Also in this video we're going to look at the adapters you get with your laptop which has USB type C. As you can see this is the HP Spectre X360 one with the USB type C. And we're also going to see if we can power these laptops using a non-native charger such as the Apple MacBook Pro USB Type-C charger. We are also going to look at using USB Type-A to USB Type-C for charging from battery banks that have these ports. And we are also going to see what the charging is like with a normal USB Type-C connector. So let's get started and we shall test some charging methods. Okay we're going to get started with the supplied charges you get with your device. So let's get started with the HP Spectra X360 13 inch 2017 model. So what we've done we've got the USB type C power meter and we're going to get the official HP charger USB type C plugged into it and then we're going to plug this into one of the USB type C ports. Now these laptops are switched on and we're going to do when the tests when they are switched off later. 19.3 volts at 2 amps. 19.3 times 2 so volts times amps equals watts which is 38.6. Now this charger that comes with the Spectre is an actual 45 watt charger. So maybe we'll get more juice out of it once we do power the machine off, which we'll test in a second. Okay, now we're going to do the exact same test using the official Apple um, USB Type-C charger and supplied cable. This is an 87 watt USB Type-C power adapter because it is a 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro. And as you can see, it starts to negotiate the power with the adapter and the lead. And then it starts to draw more amps. And there we go, it seems to be at full power. So let's just do the calculations. We saw it peak about 4.06. So we shall do 19.2 times. Oh, it's climbing a little bit more. Say about 4.10. So we'll do 19.2 times 4.10 equals 78 watts. Now considering that is an 85 watt charger, that is pretty close. So happy with that. Now what we'll do, we'll quickly power these laptops off and see what kind of power draw they do. Okay, this is with the HP Spectra X360 with the power off using their official charger. And that is 19.3 times 3.28 equals 44 watts. Now let's do the same test using the official MacBook Pro charger in the MacBook Pro. Okay, it seems to stop, um, seems to stop maximizing the power draw. So we shall say it's 19.4 times 
times 3.6 and that is a draw of 69 watts 69.8 watts so 70 watts which is still very close to the um, what's required I think because the screen isn't on it's going to require less power so it draws a little less power okay in this test we're going to test out using the MacBook Pro charger in the HP Spectra um, it should it should charge at full speed because it can provide um, all the power it needs. So let's give that a try. Now it is worth noting that when you do plug in a non-native power adapter to the HP, it comes up with a warning that says HP recommends using the original power adapter from HP, but it still charges. So nothing to worry about there. 19.5 volts at 2.1 amps which equals a power draw of 41 watts. Okay, now we're gonna do the same test with using the HP charger on the MacBook Pro with the computer on. Okay, once it settles down, we're looking at around 19.3 volts at 2.2 amps, equals a power draw of 42 watts, which is pretty good because the maximum power draw from the adapter is 45 watts. Okay, in this test we're going to test out the Anker PowerPort 1 USB Type-C with Quick Charge 3.0 model A2012. This test is with the laptops on. Now, as you can see in this test, it's not drawing any power. Um, I basically think it can't negotiate a power delivery method using that kind of plug, which is a shame because it is quite a small plug. Um, let's try this in the MacBook Pro. Now as you can see, this works in the MacBook Pro. So the maximum power draw we can expect is around about 4.1 volts times 2.93 amps, which equals a power draw of 14.3 watts. It's not ideal for the MacBook Pro, but I think because it's a low power delivery method and um, that's about as best as we can get. Okay now we're going to use the same plug but we're going to turn the laptops off and see what kind of power draw we can do. Now as you can see we do actually get a charge. It's probably because you can't really draw a lot of power with the screen on at the same time. It's only a very small charge so you know it is something. Okay now we'll try this with a MacBook Pro. Now as you can see the MacBook Pro was starting to charge at a much higher rate than the HP. And if we calculate if we calculate the power draw, we get about 4.9 times 2.9 equals to 14.2 watts. Which is um, pretty much the same as when it's powered on. So okay, in this next test we're going to use a anchor power core 10400 which is a basically a USB type A power brick, power adapter, whatever you want to call it. But because it's USB type A, we're going to use a USB type A cable to USB type C. And we're going to put that through the USB type C power draw meter and see what we can charge. Now this is with the laptops off. So I'm not expecting a big power draw, but I'm expecting some. 4.9 to 1.1.3, so 4.9 times 1.3 equals a power draw of 6.3 watts. Let's try the same in the MacBook Pro. And very consistently with the MacBook Pro, we're getting 4.72 to 2.3 amps. 4.72 times 2.3 equals a power draw of around about 11 watts. So a lot better on the MacBook Pro, but like I say, the battery in the MacBook Pro is quite a bit larger. In a very similar test, we have this very large Anker battery bank, which has got the Quick Charge 3.0 on it. This is the PowerCore Plus 26,800. Yeah, this is the PowerCore Plus 26,800, and the model is the A1374. So let's try this. In the... HP first and it does deliver the about around about the same charge like I say it probably can't negotiate with the USB type C for a better charge. 
So that equates to but around about 4.8 volts at 1.3 amps, which is 4.8 times 1.3 equals 6.2 watts of power going in. And we'll try this again, the same method, the same charger in the MacBook Pro. 4.6 volts times 2.3 amps, which is 10.5 watts. The next power brick we have is the RAV Power Super C Series 26,800 Type C Plus iSmart 2.0. That's a bit of a mouthful. And the model number is RP-PB058. This is a 99.16 watt hour battery bank and has lots of different types of charging methods. It also features a USB Type C input and output, which enables you to do quick charging on your laptops, etc. It's also got two, US two USB Type A ports and a USB micro input for a different type of charging. So let's test this out with the laptop switched off but just using the USB type A ports first. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, we're getting 4.8 volts at 1.3 amps. So consistently with another USB type A type of adapter. Let's test the same setup in the MacBook Pro, probably get the same results as the other USB type A's. Yep, exact same results, 4.6 volts at 2.3 amps. So I run about 10.5 watts. Okay, in this test, we're going to use the dedicated USB type C port and charge directly with that. Okay, this is in the HP with the power off. And as you can see straight away, we're getting much higher output, which is about 19 volts times 1.8 amps, which is a 34 watts of output, which is considerably better than anything else we've tested so far. Let's test the same scenario in the MacBook Pro with the power off. Now in the MacBook Pro, as you can see, we're getting slightly different results. We're only hitting 15 volts at around about 2.1 amps, we'll say at the peak. And that's only 31.5 watts of power going in the MacBook Pro. Now let's do the same test with the laptops on. Okay, this is the same test using the RAV power bank to the USB type C input port with the laptop on. So let's see what kind of power draw we get. And as you can see, we're getting the same amount of power draw as we get with the laptop on and off. So 19 volts at two amps. 19 times two equals a power draw of 38 watts, which is again, excellent. Now we're gonna test this out in the MacBook Pro with the power on. And as you can see, we're getting pretty much the same results. If you can see that on the screen as with it on or off. So 15 times two is obviously 30 watts of power. Okay, now we're going to do the test with using a USB type A to USB type C converter, using the laptops on and using a, like I say, a battery, battery bank. The first test we'll do with laptops on is the power core, the anchor power core 10,400. So let's plug this in. Now, as you can see on the screen, we're getting a basically a zero power draw because it's five volt at zero amps, which is zero watts. This is with the laptops on. So let's try this in the MacBook Pro. Now, as you can see the MacBook Pro, we're actually getting a power draw, which is 4.7 volts times 2.3 amps, which is 10 watts of power. We're getting a power draw of 10 watts with the normal size battery bank on the MacBook Pro which is quite good to know if you are on an airplane and you want to use your MacBook Pro and basically want to top up your power a little bit while using it at the same time. So that's good to know. Now we're going to test out the laptops powered on using the USB type A output of the Anker 26800 Power Core Plus model A1374. I'm going to expect the same results as with a smaller power bank. So that will be interesting. This is plugged into the HP with the power on. And as you can see, we have a zero power draw. So just what I expected. Again, in the MacBook Pro, we're getting the same results as with a smaller power bank. 
Now we're going to test out the Rav Power Super C Series 26800 portable charger Type C Plus iSmart 2.0. The RP PB058, but we're going to use the USB Type A ports instead. And as expected, zero power draw using the HP and USB Type A with the power on. Now the MacBook Pro, and as expected, climbs up to 4.6 volts at 2.3 amps using the RAV power with the MacBook Pro on, which is, again, as, as every other one. Okay, so what have we learned using all these different types of charging methods and things on these laptops? Basically speaking, as you would have guessed, using the native adapter you get with your laptop is the best charging option. But the good news is that you can use either USB Type-C plug adapters to USB Type-C cables or USB Type-A plug adapters to charge your laptops. Most laptops will accept the charge, but it will be quite a small amount of charge, so it will take you a long time to charge your laptops. Now, if you want to leave your laptop charger at home and just use a normal USB Type-A output on the plug, the good news is you can actually charge your laptop. Not very quick, but you can do it. So if you wanted to charge this overnight, you should get a full charge from, you know, from the time you plug it in at night, the time you wake up. Now, if you're going to use um, a power bank, you can also charge your laptop in the same way. But it all depends if your laptop is on or off. Like I say, with the HP, the laptop had to be off in most of the scenarios for it to accept a charge and it was a very small charge at that. Now this isn't really ideal if you're going to use your laptop and want to top it up with charge at the same time, but if you don't want to take your charger or you've lost your charger or you've lost the cable or something after the cable, it's good to know that you can actually plug it in with pretty much anything that can draw a power and charge your laptop. Now, I was pretty impressed with what we found with the MacBook Pro because that seemed to accept the charge whether it was on or off using any type of input. USB type A, USB type C, USB type A power brick, USB type A plug adapters, USB type C plug adapters. So it was able to negotiate a good draw of power, you know, with pretty much anything you plugged into it, which is pretty good for a traveler Again, the 15 inch version, yeah, not so much, but the 13 inch version, uh, MacBook Pro or just the MacBook, I think that would be a perfect option. It's got a smaller battery, easy to charge, faster to charge, charges at a good rate. So yeah, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't want to pick that. Yeah, you've got, you've got Mac OS, but you can always put Windows, Windows 10 on bootcamp, so problem solved. So for the best results, if you are going to use a battery bank, I would say pick up one of the large USB Type-C from RAV Power. Um, they output a considerable amount of power using the USB Type-C, and you can also use the USB Type-A with the input as well and have a really good charging solution to be honest. I mean, it's got lots of power and it's got lots of output and it's got all the inputs you need as well. So yeah, that would be a really quite affordable solution. You can get these from Amazon. So yeah, take a look. A uh, link should be in the description if you're interested. But there's also other options available such as what I'm charging my camera with at the moment while recording this video. The, the PowerCore 10400, 10, which is just a USB Type-A output, would still be able to top up your battery in your laptop, just depends if it's on or off, depending on the laptop. Now, the other option is obviously the Anchor one. This has got the same capacity as the RAV Power one. It's made out of aluminium and it is quite a bit heavier because of that. Uh, it doesn't have USB Type-C, not this model, but Anchor do a USB Type-C output, which will probably be very comparable to the RAV Power one. So these, these kind of charging solutions are really great for the traveler or people who just don't always want to plug the laptop in all the time and you know, things like that. The, they really do solve a problem with the power through USB-C 
and I think it's fantastic. I kind of know why MacBook, MacBook have gone down the USB Type-C only route. Um, they basically, it's the best solution at the time. So it's a bit of a transition, yeah, I know that, but it's the best, it's the best solution at the time. So let's just go all around. Let's just do all out on the best, best solution. So in summary, USB Type-C should be able to accept a charge on a laptop, but it might have to be off at the time. It's worth asking the question, wherever you do buy the battery banks or the power charges from, what kind of rate you will get it at. Well, generally speaking, you can always draw a charge off a battery bank using USB Type-C or USB Type-A, but it just depends if the laptop is on or off. Now, lots taken in this video, so I do appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested, and thanks for watching.